This video is sponsored by Audible. In 2017, my boyfriend saw a cat running across the snow in Norway on our Christmas holiday, and he exclaimed that it looked like a snow-cut prince. And that idea, I took it, I asked for permission, I took it, and I ran with it because I thought the title, The Snow Cut Prince, was such an interesting... It just sounded nice and I wanted to go with it. So that kind of snowballed into probably the biggest project that I've ever done and finished The Snow Cut Prince. If you are new here, my name is Dina Norland and I am an illustrator, concept artist, creator, I don't know, a lot of things. And I recently finished my biggest project to date, The Snowcat Prince, which is a graphic novel uh, with about 124 pages. It is printed in hardcover style, A4, cloud spine, gold holographic foil on the, the, the title. And it's such a beautiful book, but I think the best way to kind of sign off this project is to just answer your guys' questions on how I managed to finish a project like this because honestly I didn't think that I would be able to do it, but I did in the end. So this video is the official sign-off for this project. I am happy to be done with it, I'm happy to move on, and I'm happy that I did complete it. Look at this massive book. Just a little disclaimer. I know this book isn't per per perfect, um, it's, it has a lot of things that I wanted to change, a lot of things that I wish I didn't put in or wish that I'd changed later or something up with it or spend more time on it, but I think that is the nature of a project, it's never going to be perfect, it's never going to be 100% finished. And also all of these tips and tricks are just my experiences with this one book or my previous books but I know there's lots of things that I don't know and there's lots of things that I will learn in my next projects and at that point I will talk about those things. So take everything with a grain of salt, everyone's different, everyone works differently, but I'm hoping I can somehow inspire you to start that project that you really want to start on but you are too scared to kind of jump into. So we are gonna go through a bit of a step-by-step -step on tips that I kind of have after doing this project and I feel like I mentioned it a few times when people have asked me on stream and, and stuff like that but I will try to combine it all into this video and, and give you as much as information as I can. So the first question tip thing to talk about is what sort of project do you decide to do? Uh, how do you know if that project's gonna make it, or that story is gonna be interesting to people? Are you gonna get a publisher? Are you gonna? Is it gonna be interesting enough for people to want to read? And the simple answer for that is, you can't. You can't know what will be appealing. You kind of have to go for things that you find interesting. And I think that's the key part in choosing a story. Of course, the industry have certain things that they like and they see as popular at the moment and they will choose stories that, are, that fit into that category. But I'm talking more about personal projects and more about self-publishing and growing an audience. And I think the key part for that sort of story and that sort of project is to be really passionate about the story that you're doing. It needs to fit into what you love. Always be true to what you're making. And if you love fantasy stories, if you love sci-fi, if you love mystery, if you love horror, go with that thing. You can do everything, but just as long as you love it, people will react to it and people will connect to you and people will support you. So the big thing is choose a story that's small to begin with. I started small, I started with Fur and the Moon Rabbit. I feel like that's kind of the beginning of my bookmaking. <laughs> and that one is um, 30 pages, 31 pages long. It's Inktober story. I did poems next to illustrations and technically it isn't that big. And then I moved on to Grey Legs, which is a little bit bigger, and now suddenly the graphic novel, which was kind of stupid, but sure, I could do it somehow. But I think I wouldn't be able, wouldn't have been able to do that if I hadn't done the smaller ones before, because I kind of had an idea 
on how it would work and what I would struggle with. Um, so choose something small. Don't go for the big passion project to begin with. Try and find a fairy tale or a small story within that world that you're building, like a pre prologue, like a yeah, fairy tale, backstory, um, just some other character in the same world that you can build upon. Somehow all of my stories connect to each other because they all have this base of what I love and they are automatically in the same world but I didn't know that until I started developing the Snock Up Prince and I was like oh wow this fits in with this and I can make a world story um, and and it, they all connect together and it's really really cool and then um, I have this big passion project which is called Nettle and the Hush Hush which I really really want to start but it's like five books long and double the size that's just half of one book of the what I'm planning and it's really really big uh, but I'm leaving that to brew <laughs> and I'm choosing the smallest stories other parts of the world that is easier to do I do recommend short stories more than anything just they are easy to have a beginning a middle and an end and then you are done with it and you can move on to the next one the last thing you want is to be stuck with one big project and get bored of it. A project can kind of start with anything. A lot of people ask me, where do I start? Do I start with character? Do I start with story? Do I start... What do I start with? And personally, I start with whatever catches my eye. <laughs> um, for Grey Lies, it was a story of wolves and predators. For From the Moon Rabbit, it was just magic and poems. Um, for, for Tam Tam the Pathfinder, it's just a little creature finding things and I just have this these sudden things that inspire me. I'm like, that would be a really cool story. And I kind of already have a sense of what it is before I even start digging. I think the mistake that I did with the Snowcat Prince was that I only had the title. I had no idea what the story was and I had to dig and just claw at whatever I could to find an idea for the story and that's my one regret <laughs> with the Snowcat Prince is that I didn't have like one of those spurts of inspiration where I have the whole story like I've had with Tam Tam, I've had with Grey Legs, I've had with like every other story that I want to do but not with the Snowcat Prince so that was one of my major things that I Wish that I'd done. Um, so my goal or this decision for future projects is to only go for the ones where I have that oh, I have an idea! Oh, I have an idea! <laughs> and not just of a cat in the snow, which is still a cool way to come up with an idea, but the Snowcat Prince had no other meaning than just the Snowcat Prince. And I'm still happy I did it. I'm still happy I completed the, f the whole book, but it could have been an easier process. If you look back at those videos, if you go to the timeline, look at the vlogs, you can see how much I'm struggling with the story, how much help I needed from my dad to come up with a proper story that worked. It took a while, it took months of writing every single day to get to that point. Next tips is prepare absolutely everything. I promise you, you have to prepare everything. The first thing you should do is either thumbnail and script or just thumbnail. It's up to you, whatever kind of method works better for you. For me, I'm more of a visual person, so I prefer to just thumbnail and write in the text in the thumbnails. And for Sucker Prince, it was a struggle. As I said, it was a harder thing to get into so I had to write a lot of stuff before I could start sketching but at some point I stopped writing and I just sketched and you have to in my my preference or what I suggest is to have everything sketched out all the pages thumbnailed before you even start finishing the pages because you, you are going to get bored and if you're bored you're not going to be able to come up with the next few pages <laughs> So please have everything ready before you start. Also, don't be afraid to do multiple passes of thumbnails and storylines. I did quite a few for the Snowcat Prince. I had to go back and forth with my dad, adding things, taking things out to be able to make the story to make, story to make sense. 
So do remember to do that. If you are feeling unsure about the story, feel like feel free to change things up and try something else and see if that works better. Like you shouldn't be afraid to have to stick with one thing. But the but in here is uh, don't tweak for too long. You don't want to keep that process going for way too long and then waste so much time on <laughs> just tweaking. I think it's better to finish one thing and continue on a new thing later. Finish one thing so you can do another one and learn from the first one that you did and keep the process moving and not get stuck in trying to make one story perfect. So keep that in mind if you decide to jump back and forth between different rewrites and different stories. Um, have fun with it and try and be a bit loose and I think the biggest thing is it's not going to be perfect and you can just do it. Just, just, yeah, just do it. It's, it sounds easy but it's not, uh, but it's a good thing to have in mind. Third uh, thing that I want to talk about is choosing a style and tools. Choose your style, choose your tools and stick with it. You are going to regret having something really detailed or changing things up in the middle because that's just going to eat away at your time and you don't have that much time to do one project. If you want to finish it and move on to the next, you have to choose one thing, stick with it and just get through it. You could try drawing one page in a few different styles if you want to play around with different ways of drawing, um, but I do recommend going with something that's very comfortable, comfortable so that it's easy to get back into drawing the pages when after a long day of work or you're just tired, don't want to draw. Having one style that kind of feels comfortable and looks good, it's, it's worth exploring. This is something I always kind of say that I will do for my stories, for both for Grey Lakes and for the Snow Cat Prince, but I never actually did. And it is something I'm going to do for my future projects. I'm going to try and do different styles to try to see if I can make things simpler, uh, make things prettier, easier way to do it, and not just go with the first thing that feels right. Also remember to choose a size for your story. If it's going to be printed, you have A4, A5, you have comic size, you have a lot of different size options. You can even get custom ones. Um, Grey Legs is a custom 8 by 10 inches and Snooker Prince is A4, but it looks bigger because the case gets bigger around the pages, but the pages themselves are A4. Also choose software or tools uh, that you will stick through the whole way. If you change your tools or software halfway through, you might see that it changes a little bit. So I do recommend trying to stick with one thing, but this isn't really that necessary. I'm just saying that it's a good idea to stick with one thing and just keep using it, keep using it. For me, I use Krita the whole project. The whole of Snow Cat Prince, I only use Krita because they have a really handy dandy comic manager. I have different folders for each of my chapters and all the pages for each of those chapters are in that folder and it just makes things so much easier. For my drawing tablet I use an XP Pen 22 HD. It's a big drawing tablet, it's cheaper and it's still really really good so I'm really happy that I used that for the whole project. And then for editing the book and putting it into pages and putting in text. I use Affinity Publisher, which is the only alternative that I found for InDesign for some reason, but it's a lot cheaper in the long run if you're planning on having it for a while. If you have Adobe um, Creative Cloud, then you have InDesign, so use that, but um, Affinity Publisher is great. And then we are on to number four, and that is where to start. So you have a story, you have thumbnails, you have sketches, you have the idea of the project, where do you start? Is it a big project? Is it a small project? Is it scary? Is it not scary? It's most likely so scary. So I, I get this. So my tips is really to start wherever you want in the story. It doesn't have, you don't have to work chron chronolo chronologically from start to finish. You can start in the middle of a chapter just find the page that you're excited about and it's sort of easy to do and do that one. And if you've already done a few test pages with the styles, do that one or change it into that style or do the next one in that series. 
Um, but I do recommend kind of jumping back to the first start of the story or the start of a chapter or something like that. But the good thing about working on a big project is that you can just work on the whole thing and it doesn't have to be in order because it's not a webcomic. If it's a webcomic, it's a different thing. In webcomics, you should have everything thumbnailed out, but you can jump around and that's what I did. I started with chapter two, page number four, I think, or three. Uh, it's just see traveling through the mountains and it just seemed easy to do for the first page. <laughs> you can choose to start with drawing your character, like a character concept art sheet or just concept art or environments or rooms that you need to design. But personally, I find it really easy or easier to just thumbnail the pages with environment and kind of have a vague idea what I want. And then when I get to that page, I actually detail it and I design it as I go. But this won't work for everyone, but it works for me. So I don't actually have a lot of concept art for the snowcap prints or anything. I just went for it, uh, which might not work for everyone, but it worked really well for me. And I like it because after you've thumbnailed everything and scripted everything, you already have everything done. So to have a little bit more excitement still in the project, I like to like leave those open design choices to me do to do later. Sometimes it's a bad idea, sometimes it's a good idea, uh, but at least it's thumbnails, at least something's there. But I, I generally think that people do a lot of concept art and stuff like that, mostly for teams working together on a project because everyone needs to know what's going on. But if you're just one person, it can all be in your brain, it's okay. But again, personal preference, if you feel more secure doing some concept art, start with that and then start with the random page in the middle, but always thumbnail first and then it shouldn't be too hard to start the project. Number five, how to keep the motivation going. And this is probably the biggest question that I've gotten for from like everyone on every social media platform that I've asked for like suggestions for this video. How do you keep your motivation up while you're working on a big project because it's big, it's long, it takes a while <laughs> and I know and I just I have a few things that I do to keep myself going. So the biggest thing that I've mentioned so many times already is to have everything prepared. You have the script, you have the thumbnails, or well, maybe you don't have the script, but at least you have the thumbnails, you have character designs and you have your tools and you have the style. So now all you need to do is sit down and draw. I always say that I have three different modes for creating a story. Very excited, bored, and exhausted. So when I'm really, really excited, I do a lot of prep work, a lot of thumbnailing, writing, designing, drawing. I take the pages that are really scary, but I'm excited about. And then when I'm bored, the excited me have already prepared all of the, the guidelines to continue to work on the project even though I'm really really bored and I think that's the key thing if you have everything prepared the bored you don't have any choice you have to sit down and work it's still gonna be hard but you at least you can just sit there you don't have to come up with a big thing you don't have to come up with a new plot twist or anything you already have that going for you but you sit down and you work but if you do stumble upon a page that just doesn't work, you're just frustrated with it, you're scared of it or something, skip it. Jump to the next one and do that one instead. And then later you can go back to the one that scared you or just didn't work. That's a good thing about having everything done in advance. You can always skip to the next one and you're never really stuck. But when you end up in the exhausted stage, please, please do take a break. Ha do go have a walk, uh, do some exercise, have a day off. You don't have to work on your project all the time. If you're really in that stage where everything just hurt, take a break, do something else. In the middle of the Snoka Prince, I actually did um, have, I think, at least a month or two where I didn't work on the project at all. I did Sprout, which was a short comic, and I did Mermaid. And I did shop launch. Like I did all these things that wasn't the snow cap prints just because I was bored and exhausted of it. So that is a big tip, but always try and get back to it because if you just continue not having, well, continue just having a break, it will be harder to get back. But 
at least you have everything prepared so it should be easier to get that also don't focus too much on making every single page really really good because i don't like every single page in the snow cap prints it's 124 pages i like five of them <laughs> there's a few that i really really love and a few that i really really hate but the thing is people aren't gonna notice that people are just gonna enjoy the story because it's about the storytelling and about the the characters evolving and growing and things happening not really each illustration and masterpiece so focus on the storytelling and less about having a masterpiece just let things go and if you finish one page didn't like it you can tweak it later you can tweak it at the end before you print it or before you publish it so i feel like this is a good place to put a transition into today's sponsor which is audible audible kindly decided to sponsor this video and i'm really really happy that they did because i've been listening and using audible audiobooks for years they actually got me through my year at fcd and hours of work at my old job and still hour at work when i'm working at home and i'm just bored somehow having something to listen to when you're working kind of takes that nagging part of your brain that keeps going this is not good enough why are you doing this <laughs> and it distracts that part of your brain to the story that's being told and you can keep working even though you're so bored of the project you can keep working so I thought I would give you guys a few suggestions for audiobooks to go and check out if you're interested. I personally love like realistic fantasy novels and one of the series that got me through FCD School Design with 15 hours of drawing a day was The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb and it's just hours and hours and hours of audiobook content that I definitely recommend you check out. If you want something that's a little bit more light-hearted, there is a book called The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill and it's like listening to a Ghibli movie and I've listened to it five times I think and if you like something a little bit more sci-fi, if you haven't checked out The City of Ember by John Dupro, I think, uh, I definitely go recommend you check that one out. Audible have thousands of titles that you can look through. There is pretty much something for everyone and I like listening to fantasy, but if you like listening to inspirational books, those are there too. So go check them out and with this link, audible.com slash Dina, you can get a free month and a free audiobook. Uh, or you can text Dina to 500 500 if you are in the States. And we're moving on to number six. What to do when your book is done. So as I said, this video is very much about self-publishing and doing it yourself, doing it after work, doing it after day job, doing it after school. It's, it's not really about how to get a publisher because I personally have never got to know a, per a publisher. I don't know that part of the industry. I only know growing your own audience and doing Kickstarters. So that is what I'm going to talk about. In the future, I'm, one I'm wanting to move into web comics and webtoons specifically. I'm really excited about that. And that's going to be a whole other journey for me. I'm going to learn a lot more and I'm going to tell you guys about what I learn when I do that. Um, but yeah, if you are doing your own story, you've finished it, what do you do? So the first thing that you should do, no matter if you're printing or if you're just posting online, is always put it into some sort of editing software. Well, not editing software. I talked about it before, Affinity Publisher is what I use. You can also use InDesign, which is the standard thing, professional, professional standard, oh God, words. Um, but you put them all in there. I put my text in there personally for, because Krita isn't very good with text. And you can also export all your pages from there to a print file, which is perfect because then your colors won't be messed up and all that stuff. About the CMYK thing, a lot of people are very confused about this. If you do decide to print your book, your book is printed CMYK. If you drew everything digitally, you drew it in RGB, which is the normal digital screen color space. But when printing, you use different a different color space, which doesn't have certain colors that you can get digitally. And that is called CMYK. But a lot of people will tell you to draw your pages in CMYK. Don't do that. I don't do that. <laughs> what you can do is that you draw them in RGB, which is the normal setting. 
every program like has that as an automatic setting and then in the affinity publisher you can have it convert all your color spaces into cmyk when it exports the files i'll put my settings here so you can find it ask your printer what color um cmyk profile they use because a lot of printers use different ones and if you use the ones that they use it will match the colors more closely so try and do that the one i'm showing is for mixam and that brings me over to the printer that i use which is mixam and they're amazing they are currently in canada in the states in australia and in the uk probably somewhere else that i don't know but they are everywhere they're the most friendly friendliest friendliest people that i've ever talked to they are so helpful they've helped me a bunch and if you ever have any questions you can just ask them and they have really 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 good prices i would never buying my books myself so I'm very happy I have somebody who have really good prices and they're really nice and just helpful helpful so go check them out if you want to print something they are the only printers I've ever printed with and they are the ones that I recommend um they even printed this one which I didn't think they could if you decide to do a kickstarter which is a natural progression for a lot of people who do their own projects they want to kickstart their comic or yeah, kickstart the story <laughs> because they want to print it and printing costs money and it's nice to have money up front. You can also do pre-orders, which is pretty much like Kickstarter, but Kickstarter has a bigger audience or platform so you can get more new people and not just depend on your already existing audience. I will say now that the amount of support will vary very much for how many kind of followers, how many is in your community who are willing to support you so don't expect a lot of support for your first project uh, as an example my first kickstarter was for the moon rabbit which i think none no, not that many people know of but it was a, a inktober story it was illustration with the poem i printed it it was i got 80 people supporting me on the kickstarter it was amazing thank you so much and for gray lakes it was about 450 500 people and then for Snowcat it's evolved into 1300 people so it does evolve gradually and as long as you put yourself out there and share your work and talk with people um, like engage in the community you will slowly start to build your audience and the more you do the better you get the better you get the more people are interested and it's just a nice curve of building it up but I can't speak for anything else than what I've experienced myself so um and I don't really know how to build an audience I do recommend always do YouTube videos or be active on social media be active with other people I feel like the people that I feel I see grow really quickly are people who want to be a part of the community and they go to another artist they're part of their community and then they grow because everyone supports them because they're in that community so be in the community just don't only think about money but think about having a collective of people that you are excited with and like oh i'm gonna do this project and you do that project and they support you and hype it up and it's amazing so keep that in mind also more kickstarter tips if you do decide to do a kickstarter please don't do any stretch goals to start with they are a money pet if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> the only thing you th should think about is the cost of printing the book, how many you should print to be able to, like, how, wait, how many people you need or how much money you need to print that much and also how much shipping is to everywhere in the world and how much that should be. Um, just plan out that. The main thing is to get the book printed, not the stretch goals, even though they're really fun and really cute, but the money, it will not like it will go directly from your profit the only reason you can introduce stretch goals is when you get so many supporters that the cost of the book is less than you planned so that the part that it shrunk by if do so that since the profit expanded you can take a little bit more of that profit and put it into stretch goal that is the part of the stretch goal if you don't have that and you just plan to do a stretch goal that will come directly out of your profit and you don't want that you just want profit book shipping shipping is really annoying also remember that the goal on kickstarter includes the shipping <laughs> that one's annoying <laughs> just an example for the snowcat prints 14,000 pounds went to shipping 
So you see 58,000 goal reached, well 15,000 of that is shipping <laughs> and like shipping expenses and ooh, it's a lot of money. And that kind of concludes my tips on how to do a story. I hope you enjoyed well, story a project and I'm just so happy to be done. I'm so happy to be able to move on, to do new things, to new projects. This project was actually way too big. I would prefer a short comic to be about 50 pages. It would be a lot quicker for me to do. But yeah, I'm happy to move on. I'm happy it's done. I can... <gasps> I just remembered I can do something on this, on, on this video. I did this when I started Grey Legs. I made this thing where I put my next projects on it. Grey Legs, that I could check off pretty quickly. The Snowcap Prints, which this is from 2018? Yeah. <laughs> and then there are dragons in the tree is an idea that I want to do and the house between the bridges which is inspired by this area let's see if I can cross Snooker Prince out this is kind of a big thing for me you guys have no idea how long I've looked at this thing Snooker Prince complete so that that marks it by the way shipping is horrible don't do it it took me a month and a half to do <laughs> That's a whole other video, that's gonna be a vlog. I filmed the whole thing. Most of it. Most of it. Just to end this video, there's questions that have popped up. Will there be a sequel? No, there will not. Snowcat Prince is a one-shot. It's combined, like, it's very... It's a very big story, very compressed. It could have been a lot longer. It's not. It's not going to be. I'm done with it. I'm gonna move on to other things now. Um, so don't expect a sequel. Two, um, there will be a few more copies for sale in a few months, a month and a half. Uh, just keep your eyes out for a shop update and I will have more copies of the Snugget Prints. Um, if you want to get notified, you can go to my shop. There is a uh, waiting list option, so you can go there and sign up and you should get an email when the shop launches again. Um, three, there will be a digital version of the book, cheaper, most likely, that you can buy in summer. I'm gonna also notify you guys of that. My plans for the future, project-wise, is currently a webtoon series. Uh, webtoon is having a short comic competition that I really want to join and I'm doing Water Girl, which I have two videos about on my channel, so you can go check those out, I'll put them somewhere. And that's gonna be really fun, that's a short story, but in the scrolling format of a webcomic and it will what webtoons and it will be free to read, so you can read it for free. Um, the next book project is Tam Tam the Pathfinder, which I'm so excited to do. And I also want to do the fairies that I started that I didn't finish for February and I want to print that as a scene. It will be a risograph scene, very excited. But yeah, I'm pretty tired. I am, it's no cut print, it was a long year and a half uh, in the work and I'm just so happy to be done and be able to move on to new things. Um, if you do want to come and hang out with me more and you need some company, if you're not listening to audiobooks, if you need a company, come, on, come out and hang with me on Twitch. I'm gonna start streaming regularly. I'm gonna do my own projects and we can do our projects together. It's gonna be great. Um, Patreon's still open if you wanna come support me and chat more. We chat a lot. And uh, yeah, I just wanna say thank you guys so much for your support. This would not have been done without your guys' help. Like, you guys watching my videos, supporting me on Twitch, supporting me on Kickstarter, supporting me on Patreon. I am completely self-funded by you guys. <laughs> I am supported by my audience, which is a dream come true. I do not take it for granted. It's insanely amazing. Thank you guys so, so much. And I'm excited to keep doing it and keep giving, keep making videos that inspire you to do your own thing. I just, there's so much I'm gonna do this year and I'm so happy to be done with that so that I can do the other things that I want to do. Uh, sorry, plants. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. It was a long one. I just noticed that I filmed for a very long time. I hope you enjoyed it nevertheless. And thank you guys and I'll see you guys later. Bye.